Matthew McConaughey's career as an actor is quite unique. He gained fame through his roles in the excellent drama films A Time to Kill, Contact, and Amistad. But at some point, Matthew suddenly changed course and started working on romantic melodramas and comedies. Of course, McConaughey continued to look for roles in non-comedy projects such as U-571 or Reign of Fire. However, those movies were either unprofitable or completely failed at the box office. In contrast to hugely successful projects like How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. In 2005, perhaps deciding to give in to the inevitable, Matthew accepted a role in the comedy film Sahara, based on the novel by famous American writer Clive Cussler. Sahara has a rather interesting story. Many Hollywood studios attempted to buy the film rights to Clive Cussler's novel. But following the massive failure of Raise the Titanic in the early 1980s, the author promised to never sell the film rights to his novels again. Raise the Titanic was one of the 80s' biggest disappointments. Astronomical production costs quickly destroyed the young company ITC Entertainment. However, unlike many other big-budget failed movies, the money allocated in Raise the Titanic was quite transparent. The plot of the adventure film, based on Kustler's novel, revolved around raising the Titanic from the seabed. Despite the obvious silliness and fantastical nature of the plot, the book won over a dozen literary awards and received widespread acclaim. The Titanic model for the movie cost $350,000 to build. When the filmmakers tried to put it in a prepared water tank to start filming, it turned out that the model wouldn't fit there, meaning the ship wouldn't be able to gracefully float in the $3 million bathtub. The filmmakers could have sold the existing model to some museum and made a smaller one, but guess what they did instead? Correct. They spent another $6 million on a new tank. The failure was massive. Despite a $37 million budget, the movie only grossed $7 million in theaters. In today's money, that would be equivalent to a $138 million budget and $26 million in box office earnings. To top it all off, the movie was bombarded with Golden Raspberry Awards. The audience shared the experts' opinions, and the movie's ratings on specialized websites are still terribly low. Anyway, the author of the novel was appalled by what he saw and publicly promised that he wouldn't tolerate anyone violating his books like that again. However, in the early 2000s, billionaire Philip Anschutz offered Kustler $10 million for the rights to Sahara, guaranteeing him complete creative control over the film adaptation. Kustler couldn't refuse such an offer. His creative control became one of the main problems of the future film, as the producers had to argue with him over every little detail. When Tom Cruise expressed interest in the project, it was Kustler who turned him down. He thought the actor was too short and could easily get lost in some sandstorm. After seeing where Kustler was going with the project, director Rob Bowman, who had already signed the contract, decided to back out. One could have praised Bowman for his insight, but he went off to make Elektra, one of the worst comic book movies of the 2000s. After that, his career didn't work out and he got stuck on television. Kustler wanted Hugh Jackman to play the lead, but he also declined the offer. Only after that did McConaughey get the main role. The next one to join the cast was Penelope Cruz, but the producers had to fight Kustler for her as he wanted Salma Hayek in the movie. The studio managed to convince Kustler by explaining the tax advantages of shooting the movie in Europe with a European actress, which Mexican Hayek couldn't provide. Everyone in Hollywood saw what was happening with the movie, and no one wanted to get involved with it. All directors who received offers from studio producers refused. As a result, the job was assigned to Breck Eisner, the son of Disney's chief executive who had previously only worked on a few episodes in The Invisible Man and Thought Crimes. In 2007, the Los Angeles Times acquired cost accounting documents for Sahara, exposing what was going on with the set and what the money was spent on. The studio's decision to shoot most of the film in Morocco, which seemed like a good idea at first, led to huge unforeseen costs. A significant part of the expenses were bribes to the Moroccan authorities because, as it turned out, some of the studio's intended filming locations were protected areas. $250,000 was spent on Penelope Cruz's stylist alone. In addition, some of the scenery had to be first assembled in the UK and then shipped to Morocco. To make matters worse, the plane crash scene, which cost several million dollars to film, had to be cut out during post-production. The script was edited so many times that the scene no longer fit the storyline. McConaughey was one of the few people involved in the filming who had high expectations for Sahara. He hoped it would become his Indiana Jones. 
he drove his trailer across America, promoting Sahara wherever he could. But life had other plans. Sahara bombed in American theaters, putting an end to any franchise discussions. With a $130 million budget, the film only made $119 million at the box office. Since most of the budget was allocated by a private investor, the studio managed to avoid major losses. As for the investor, his estimated loss on Sahara was around $80 million. Cussler was enraged when he saw the final version of Sahara and filed lawsuits. By the way, those lawsuits caused the leak of documents that ultimately ended up in the hands of the Los Angeles Times. Cussler claimed that the dozen screenwriters who edited his script turned Sahara into something entirely different. The writer insisted that the producers intentionally deceived him, resulting in Sahara becoming a dumb comedy instead of the excellent adventure film it was intended to be. Out of everyone involved in the production, McConaughey's career took the hardest hit. Studios simply stopped offering him non-comedy roles. A couple of years later, he starred in the adventure comedy Fool's Gold, which was much less expensive than Sahara, but still had a fairly impressive budget for the genre. The film also turned out to be a failure, and McConaughey disappeared from Hollywood for three years. He returned with the movie The Lincoln Lawyer, which marked the beginning of a new comedy-free chapter in his career. In 2013, his roles in the TV series True Detective and the Oscar-winning drama Dallas Buyers Club brought him back to the top.